everyone, it's me again, Brittany, and I'm here today to do <laughs> probably my largest book haul yet. Um, yeah, I've been collecting these for a few months now, honestly. I just haven't been posting hauls very often, and I just have accumulated quite a few books. I haven't actually bought any in the past month, so these are mostly from October. <laughs> oh my goodness, um, let's count and see how many there are. I think there's 29. Oh my god. This is gonna be a huge book haul. There's a good chance that I'm not gonna be able to get into too many of the book's plots just because there are so many that I don't want this video to be an hour long, so please forgive me. I'm gonna actually try and start a new thing where I link the books down below, like their Goodreads page or like their Amazon link, and if there's any that you kind of were interested in but I didn't give a good enough review for, just go down there, check them out, and yeah, let's kind of just dive right in. This is in no particular order because they all just fell over so I have no idea where to even start. But let's just start with these two. So the first two books that I want to haul for you today are A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. These are both of the collector's editions. This is the normal like exclusive collector's edition. This is the Barnes and Noble collector's edition. There is no difference between them except for the fact that this one's silver and this one's black. I just thought they were really pretty. I really enjoy collecting multiple editions of books that I really enjoyed and I thought that there would be different content between both of them but it's not that big of a loss because I actually did buy them on Book Outlet for a much cheaper price than what they are sold. So I am really happy with this. I have actually read A Darker Shade of Magic. I am really enjoying it. I'm currently at the very, very end of A Conjuring of Light. Uh, so basically, I've said this synopsis so, so many times, but it has to do with London, and there's four different Londons. There's a gray London, which has no magic. There's a black London, which was destroyed by magic. There's a white London, which is being destroyed by magic. And there's red London, which is thriving with magic. And we follow Kel, who is an Antari, and he can travel between all these four Londons. They kind of live like right stacked on top of each other. And he's one of the only magicians that is able to do so through blood magic. So this is a very fun, very different tale of magic, and I really enjoy it, honestly. I love Lila Bard. She's probably my favorite character right next to Holland? I don't know. This is a really good series, especially if you like high fantasy and kind of like adventure in general, so two down. 27 to go. The next one I'm gonna haul for you today is Fairy Tale Volume 9. As you guys know, I am kind of making my way through these. I think I'm only on Volume 3 right now, though. Maybe even volume two, I'm not 100% sure. I do really enjoy these though. These are a manga that are created by my fa favorite like manga con, I, I think is what it's called. But it is a high fantasy manga which takes place in this world where there are guilds of wizards that kind of do all the battling for you. And we follow just a <sighs> group of kids from the best guild in the whole land on their adventures, on their journeys. I'm still in the very beginning. Uh, mangas take a while to kind of build, especially when it's a big story like fairy tale. I'm pretty sure there's 60 volumes or something crazy like that. So right now I'm in the very, very beginning of this story. I really couldn't tell you where we're going, but I am really enjoying it. So after that, I have The Trials of Apollo, The Burning Maze by Rick Riordan. This is the third book in the Trials of Apollo series. I haven't actually gotten to this one yet, but I have been really enjoying this series. I love following Apollo. He has been turned into a mortal by Zeus, and he kind of has to live as this human teenage boy, and he hates it, and he has to go through these trials, obviously the trials of Apollo, to get back his immortality and become a god again. So it's really fun. I love how Apollo thinks. It's really entertaining. It's very lighthearted, but at the same time, there's a lot of very serious issues that are being dealt with in this series, and I have enjoyed it a lot so far. And this is the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition, which I don't know what that means. I think it came with a bookmark. Oh, oh, nope. Cool, puzzle collection. I love puzzles. Oh, it's green! I didn't know that, that's gorgeous. Uh, honestly, Rick Riordan's books have some of my favorite covers, so I never really take off the covers to find out what's under it. Well, I do when I start reading them, but they're just absolutely stunning, and the artwork and the color schemes just go so well together. They're so freaking pretty. Next up, I have And I Darken and Now I Rise by Kirsten White. I bought both of these on Book Outlet. I originally wasn't completely sure if I wanted to read this series. It does sound completely like my sort of book. It has, follows a badass 
female protagonist who kind of is killing her way through everything and if that doesn't sound like something that I would enjoy I don't know what would I don't know too much about it I know it's a retelling I want to say of Vlad the Impaler but I could totally be wrong um, I just know it's a retelling of like a historical fiction event I'm not really sure uh, I don't know too much about the series as I said it's one that I never thought that I would pick up but I've just been hearing so many good things about it and I couldn't remember why I didn't want to pick it up anymore and when I saw it for a good price on book outlet I was like well might as well give it a go <laughs> After that I have Sea Fire by Natalie C. Parker. I actually, I think I got this in a subscription box and I loved it. I actually gave this five stars. I've been really enjoying pirate style books, just adventure style books, out on the sea style books, but I was kind of nervous to get into Sea Fire. I had just finished Daughter of the Siren Queen and I'd been very disappointed overall by the story and I was kind of worried that this is going to be not amazing. But I actually loved it so, so much. We follow our badass captain, Caledonia Sticks, and her all-female crew through just this amazing journey. There's such a good plot. There's such a good crew dynamic. The one thing that I think that fell uh, bad for me in Daughter of the Siren Queen was the fact that I didn't care about any of the crew members. I didn't know any of the crew members. And in this one, you really get to know them. You really can feel the friendships and get to know the characters around you. And you also really understand Caledonia Styx's mindset. You kind of follow her through this path of trying to come to terms with her past and move past it. it it's tragic. Like, her backstory is tragic, and therefore she no longer trusts or wants anything to do with men. So this is kind of following her on a journey of like self-discovery and moving past her stuff while also being super, super badass and amazing. And also, did I mention that this has a little bit of post-apocalyptic vibes and amazing technology? It's so good. Now, speaking of Daughter of the Siren Queen, that is the next one that I'm gonna haul for you. I actually didn't realize that I hadn't hauled this yet and just saw it in my pile. Uh, this is by Trisha Levenseller. This is the second book in the Daughter of the Pirate King duology, I wanna say. And I really, really enjoyed the first book. And I did really enjoy the ending of this book. This one follows Captain Alosa, who is Daughter of the Pirate King, as one might expect. And she is super badass. She has this super badass female crew in her last, in the first book. We just discover so much about her and about her personality. She actually plans her own capture on someone else's pirate ship so, she, so that she can steal something from them. And it was a really, really cool first story. I think this one still had an, like a really good plot going for it and I did enjoy the tension between Alosa and the person that they're fighting against. I really, really enjoyed the use of sirens mythology overall in this duology. I think that that's one of the things that Trisha Levenseller did really well, and I'd rather have an entire book about the sirens and the siren queen than this. It just fell flat for me. It wasn't bad necessarily, but again, I didn't care about her crew. I didn't really care about the end results of this book. So I know that sounds really harsh, but yeah. Okay. The next two books are The Queen of Blood and The Reluctant Queen by Sarah Beth Durst. I don't really know what these are about. <laughs> um, the reason that I actually got these though is because I've been really wanting to expand into adult fantasy lately and these are adult fantasy books and I just, I want more in my collection that way. When there is a moment that I'm sitting there trying to decide on my next read, I can actually pick out of adult fantasy rather than just young adult. I still love young adult. It's still my heart and soul but I really feel like I've been enjoying learning different kinds of magic systems. I feel like adult fantasy does magic a lot better than how young adult does it. I also really like just more uh, serious topics being discussed. Not to say that young adult doesn't discuss serious topics because it definitely does, but I feel like adult does it in a very different manner. So yeah, I've been trying to expand it a little bit more and I've heard I think a couple of really good reviews for this and they're pretty small, which is actually not what I expected, but let's read it. An idealistic young student and a banished warrior become allies in a battle to save their realm in this first volume of a mesmerizing new epic fantasy series filled with political intrigue, violent magic, malevolent spirits, and thrilling adventure. Honestly, there's a dog on the cover. My, my, my camera's not zooming in on it, but there's a dog right here. Sold. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's honestly probably the worst summary that I'm going to probably give for any of the books on here, but these are the ones that I know the least about in my entire haul. But they're also ones that I'm pretty excited for, so I can't wait to see what I think about them. Next up I have Uglies by Scott Westerfeld. I do already own 
the Uglies series, but I own it in the old covers and I have extras in these fancy white editions. And I really love these editions. So as I see them on sale, I'm gonna start collecting them just because I just, I love how clean these look. I love this series. This is actually one of my favorite series from my childhood, so yeah. This takes place in a futuristic society which has an amazing use of technology and a very ingrained class system. So we have the uglies. Oh my god, my battery's gonna die. Okay, I have to kind of hurry. So we have the uglies who are just teenagers before they're able to turn, I want to say 16 or 17? Yeah, turn 16 to have a surgery to become a pretty and go live with the pretties in the pretty society. And it is just an amazing, amazing story. It just makes you think so much and I love I love everything that it deals with. It's just one of my favorite dystopian societies that I've ever read and I highly, highly recommend it. I know that a, a new book in this world has come out recently, Imposters, and I definitely wanna get my hands on it. Next up, I have The Raven King by Maggie Stiefvater. This is another thing that I'm kind of collecting as I see them on good prices. I still have only read the first book in the series and I did really enjoy it. I think the magic is really cool. I think the writing is very nice and I love the atmosphere overall. It follows Blue and the Raven bo Boys, the four Raven Boys. We have Ro Ronan, Adam, Gainsey, and I always forget the last boy's name and I always feel really bad because he's kind of my favorite. But yeah, I, I read it a long time ago. I did really enjoy it. Um, it's not my favorite thing yet, but I definitely want to read the rest of the series before I make any final decisions on that. Next up, I have The Bane Chronicles by Cassandra Clare and friends. I thought I was never going to read this and I thought I never wanted to read this. I'm still kind of on the fence about it. I do want to read all the books in the Shadowhunter world, but I have a little problem getting myself to read these like short story style books. I still haven't read Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy either, but hopefully I'll get to it. I've heard kind of mixed reviews overall. I hear that some stories are fantastic while other ones just there was really no point to, but I do love Magnus Bane and would love to know more about him. Sorry, I'm definitely rushing now because my battery's gonna die. Next up, I have To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Christo. I'm excited. I've actually, I haven't heard too, too much about this. I know it has to do with Sirens. I believe it's a Little Mermaid retelling in which this Little Mermaid collects hearts of some sort, but she messes up and her mother sends her to the surface so that she co can collect one last prince's heart who has been hunting her down. And so she gets turned into a human and we deal with all the repercussions from there. I'm very curious to see how I feel about it. Obviously, I've been really enjoying kind of like siren stories. Next up, I have The Last Namsara by Kristen Cicerelli. Truthfully, I barely know anything about this, but I'm 99% sure it deals with dragons, which was enough to draw me in because I haven't read a good dragon book in a really long time and I was curious, but it sounds absolutely fascinating. <laughs> So I'll read you the last little bit. All Asha wants is to escape her tragic past and evade her bleak future when she's offered the chance to gain her freedom in exchange for the life of the most powerful dragon in Fireguard, she takes it, but soon finds that there may be more truth to the ancient stories than she could ever have expected. With the help of a secret friend, a slave boy from her betrothed's house, betrothed's household, Asha must shed the layers of her Iskari bondage and open her heart to love, light, and truth that has been kept from her. I'm just really excited because, again, a badass female protagonist, and there's dragons! And I really can't wait to see what they do with the dragon myths, and yeah, I've actually heard really good things about this, so I am excited to dive on in. And the cover is gorgeous! After that I have Warcross by Marie Lu. Um, I'm actually kind of nervous to pick this up. I know, I've never read it, which is insane because this is like one of Booktube's favorite books. This is basically like Ready Player One, but girls and better from what I've heard. We follow a girl named Amika who is this expert hacker and accidentally hacks her way into one of the world's most famous competitions. And when she's called in by the company, she thinks she's about to be executed, but instead they want her to work for them and catch any other people that are hacking the system. So it sounds really fascinating. The only reason I'm nervous about it is because I've heard very, very like eh reviews about the second book, but that doesn't mean I shouldn't give the first book a try. So that's why we're here. Okay, the next three books I have to show you, 
I only have two of them because the other one's downstairs, is Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Maas. Did I need three copies? No. Do I have three copies? Accidentally. Um, I obviously went to the tour with my boyfriend to go just watch Sarah J Maas talk about the book, and they gave a copy of Kingdom of Ash which is signed by Sarah J Maas to every person that bought a ticket. So obviously there's mine, there's my boyfriend's, and he definitely doesn't read the series, so I kept it. And then I got the Barnes & Noble special edition with the gorgeous cover art by Charlie Bowater, which is why I have three copies, which is absolutely ridiculous. But do I love them? Yeah, I do. So Kingdom of Ash is obviously the last book in the Throne of Glass series. I'm sure you guys have talk heard me talk about it way too many times at this point, so I'm not really gonna touch on it. Next up we have Flame in the Mist by Renee Audier. I believe it's actually a Mulan retelling, and it's autographed, which uh, I didn't expect when I got it. I got this from, again, Book Depository. I was confusing Flame in the Mist with Forest of a Thousand Lanterns at the time, and I thought this was Forest of a Thousand Lanterns, which that one is a villain origin story that is kind of taking place in Asia while Flame in the Mist is a Mulan retelling, and I've heard kind of mixed reviews about it. I have read Renee Audier's previous books, The Wrath and the Dawn. I haven't read The Rose and the Dagger. I haven't gotten to that one yet just because I was like very meh about it. I think her writing had a lot of potential, but overall I just wasn't completely sold on the story. So I am excited to see what Flame in the Mist brings. I've heard sort of mixed reviews, but nothing solidly bad, so I'm excited to give it a go, and Mulan is honestly one of my favorite Disney movies, which I know that that's probably been changed so much, but it is one of my favorite Disney movies. I'll Make a Man Out of You is like everything that I love, out of everything. So the next three books that I'm going to show you I don't remember much about anymore, but I did get them on Book Outlet when I was buying a whole bunch of other books. A Million Junes by Emily Henry. I know this is a magical realism story, which I love magical realism, so when I saw that I had to go for it. When June collides, quite literally, with Saul anger, sparks fly, and everything June has always known is thrown into chaos. Fascinating. Next up is a book that everyone was raving about a couple months ago, and I had to pick it up when I saw a copy for cheap. Letters to the Lost by Bridget Kemmerer? Bridget Kemmerer. From what I know about this book, it has to do with two people that are kind of dealing with grief and loss, um, and this one girl leaves letters in the cemetery for her dead mother, is what I want to say. Yes, Juliet is leaving letters for her dead mother, and this boy Declan picks them up and starts answering her. And it's a very touching story from what I've heard, very emotional, and I'm really excited to get to this. I actually really enjoy contemporaries that deal with grief for whatever reason. Like, I don't enjoy them, but I have a good time reading them. I don't know what that says about me. Okay, and then there's Even the Darkest Stars by Heather Fawcett. I'm very, very, very intrigued by this synopsis. It basically has to do with these royal explorers. Uh, they are appointed by the king and they explore their territory and kind of find out more about their world. And this has to do with a girl that's always wanted to be one of the king's explorers. Emperors, royals, royal explorers, not the king, emperor. And she actually gets the chance to be an explorer, and she just learns more about her continent and her territory and her world, and I think it's more of like a discovering herself kind of story, but I love adventure and traveling books, so <laughs> obviously this isn't like real life travel, this is fantasy travel, which is uh, my preferred form of travel. So, <sighs> okay, we're almost done. These last three books I actually recently unboxed in like book boxes. There's Shadow and the Fox by Julie Kagawa. This one actually sounds fantastic. I remember I read off this thing in my book outlet unboxing. A fox shapeshifter sworn to hide a mysterious scroll, a secret assassin under orders to kill to obtain it. Shapeshifters and assassins are... yes. Um, and Pride by Ibi Zaboy. I've heard really amazing things about this. This is a Pride and Prejudice retelling, but in Brooklyn, I believe. And it just, it sounds like it's gonna be very hard-hitting. It just, it sounds like it's dealing with a lot of the major topics that we're kind of talking about now in society, just with race and class and just kind of learning to love each other, and I'm really excited to pick this up. I do kind of want to read Pride and Prejudice before I read this, just because I like seeing those like Easter eggs between two stories, so I probably won't pick this up until then, but a lot of you guys have told me that I can read it without reading Pride and Prejudice, 
So we'll see what I end up doing. And lastly, there's Beneath the Citadel by Destiny Soria. Or not lastly, there's three more books. Oh yeah, so this has to do with a dystopian world that's kind of been living off of these prophecies that were told thousands of years ago. Like they follow these prophecies to a T and the government has gotten very controlling and very bad. And these four friends have kind of decided like, what if they make their own prophecy, I believe, or they want to go steal the old prophecy so that they can kind of live without them. Either way, it sounds very fascinating. Probably secret society stuff. All right, and the last three books I don't really have to give very big descriptions about, but I'm very excited. I got these during Barnes & Noble's 50% off sale on Black Friday, and that's Aesop's Fables, which I'm so happy to own this beautiful hardcover classic edition. It's still in the plastic because I haven't found a place on my shelf for it, and I don't want to hurt it. Um, I obviously grew up on Aesop's Fables. My dad read them to me when I was really young, and I loved, loved, loved them. So I'm really excited that I was able to pick this up for 50% off, and it's just gorgeous. And I got Gods and Heroes of Ancient Greece. I love Greek mythology. It's definitely something that's always caught my attention, something that I've just researched on my own a lot, but I've never owned a book specifically dedicated to that, so I'm very excited to have such a gorgeous edition, which is what I'm gonna say about all of these because I, I love how pretty they are. Um, and lastly, I have The Iliad and The Odyssey by Homer. I have read The Odyssey and loved The Odyssey, but I'm actually pretty sure I'd never read The Iliad, so... I'll have to get on that now that I have a copy of it, but just look how pretty. I know that's what I'm saying about all of them, but they're just gorgeous. I'm obsessed. Oh, there's one last book. So there was 30. Oh my gosh. And that's The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. I don't know. My mom actually got this for me for my birthday, and I completely forgot to haul it after that, and it's actually one of my favorite gifts that I've ever gotten. My mom gave it to me just being like, this is one of the stories that I grew up on, and I loved it so much. She actually got me this one and then the Spanish version, but she kept the Spanish version, which is fine. And I'm just really excited to have this in my collection. I've heard very amazing things about this, books with Chloe raves about it. I know TJ Reads the Stars recently read it and loved it, and I can't wait to see what I think of it. I know it's gonna be a very whimsical, very touching story, and and I am excited to be able to share this with my mom, so yeah. That's it for this book haul. I'm sorry it was kind of all over the place. I'm sorry I forgot what half of these books synopses were. It's probably because they've been sitting there for like two or three months, which is insane. I am glad that I've really lowered my book buying recently, but yeah, I just love buying books. Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down below if there's any that caught your eye or that you've recently read and loved because I would love to know your opinions on what I should pick up next. I make videos Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays most of the time, and I will see you in my next one. Bye. Ah, ah. They've all fallen and I haven't even started. Oh, what's her name again? Favorite dystopian society apocalypse no yeah of throne of of throne of glass because my battery is dying i don't even know how this happened it was full just a minute ago and then i know i know what this is about i don't know what i'm saying this is a bad haul we're beautiful creatures